Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the South Kansas City Chamber of Commerce Annual Meeting and Impact Awards. Although we miss seeing your smiling faces in person, we are excited for today's program as we get to recognize some awesome companies and organizations for their impact on the community. Meet a couple of the Chamber's volunteer leaders that helped us successfully navigate the past year of unexpected turns and twists and talk about the year to come. This is a milestone year for the Chamber. In 1931, three businessmen filed an application with the state of Missouri to incorporate the Chamber of Commerce of Consolidated School District No. 1, a name which later changed to the South Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. Historical documents show that the mission of the Chamber was to tackle issues that had an impact on the businesses in the community and create an organization with political clout that could be the voice of businesses in the area. Ninety years later, the focus is still much the same for our organization. We could not do what we do today without the support of our members, and that includes putting on this program for you. At this time, I would like you to give a huge thank you to Burns and McDonald for their continuous support of our annual meeting at the Platinum level and introduce Mike Talboy, Director of Government Affairs. Thank you, Vicki, and thank you to everyone here for your continued support of the South Kansas City Chamber and the absolutely phenomenal work that they do. I just want to point out the, uh, you know, obviously this was a very trying year, but the ability for everybody to pull together and continue to support the work that Vicki and her staff do and everybody here at the South Kansas City Chamber, I just want to say on behalf of the 7,800 employee owners at Burns and McDonald, we really do appreciate the fact that you have stuck by uh, such an important organization like the South Kansas City Chamber. Obviously, this was a very unique year that we just got through, and we're in the middle of another semi-unique year, but hopefully uh, the corner has been turned and we can really uh, start to see the light at the end of the tunnel for what this could be as a society and an economy, and for all of us that want to get back to just being able to socialize and, and get together as normal. And I really do want to say thank you to everybody uh, for all of your support in the community. Uh, Burns and McDonald has never stopped working. We were an essential business that, uh, you know, had all sorts of projects around Kansas City and, and the country. And we have been continuing to do the work that we do for the community, uh, whether it be building buildings or helping run logistics for vaccines for the hospitals. Uh, we have been here and we continue to stay here and we love our community and we love our relationship with the South Kansas City Chamber as it is our hometown chamber uh, and where we are located and they have been fantastic partners and so again on behalf of all of the employee owners of Burns and McDonald thank you very much for your support of this great organization and Vicki thank you so much. I'd also like to recognize the other companies that have sponsored today's event including our gold level sponsors Honeywell FM&T Martin City Community Improvement District, and Port KC. Our silver sponsors, A.L. Huber, General Contractor, First Call, MCC Longview, and St. Anthony's. Our bronze sponsors, Bank of Blue Valley, Grade A Tree Care, McClure Engineering, Olson, Rose Hill Gardens, St. Joseph Medical Center, State Representative Mark Sharp, and State Line Strategies. And today's production could not be complete without our video production sponsor, Kjo Media. Thank you to each of you for your ongoing support of our organization. Early I mentioned that you would meet a couple of people that have helped us get through the past year by providing leadership and advice on the direction the chamber should be taking during the unprecedented year of 2020. At this time, I've asked Erica Beeler, Regional Director of Business Development and Marketing for St. Joseph Medical Health Center to join me. Erica served as chair of the board for the chamber last year. Erica, thank you for your leadership over the past year. I'm sure if you'd known what a wild ride 2020 was going to be, you might not have shown up at our annual meeting to take your role. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. No, it's been an honor to serve the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm really excited to see what Diane does in 2021. So Erica, talk a little bit about how the chamber navigated the pandemic and what you feel were our biggest accomplishments. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in March 2020, life as we know it shifted and changed dramatically. Our booming economy halted pretty much overnight. 
but our community and our chamber came together to support each other by shopping at small businesses, supporting local restaurants, contributing to non-for-profits, and in many other ways. Although we could not shake hands, gather in person, or even safely work out of our offices, in a matter of weeks, our team was able to innovate and adapt to virtually everything, offices, events, community connections. And while it was challenging, the team pushed forward so that the chamber could continue to do what it does best, take care of businesses in the community in which we serve. A few things we did I would like to highlight. Providing our members with updated information, everything from CDC protocols to PPP loans and local health department guidelines, those were some of the biggest and first challenges that we encountered. This information was changing sometimes hourly, definitely daily, and it was our job to keep the businesses updated. Pivot from that to in-person events, virtual events continued to provide networking opportunities to our members through Zoom and other virtual modalities. The gift card challenge was the great one, um, something that we did to help struggling restaurants. So Erica, you mentioned going from in-person to virtual events. Do you feel that there were some positive outcomes from this? Yeah, absolutely. I think going from in-person to virtual events, initially it was pretty tricky, but we were able to attract some national speakers because of this. It was just easier for them to attend remotely. And by leveraging technology, we had more members participate in events than ever before. I think these modalities will continue. I don't see the remote learning and the remote um, webinars going away. So Erica, how would you sum up 2020 for the Chamber? So 2020 was the year of adaptability, change, innovation, Zoom, and a little bit anxiety. I would like to thank those outgoing, selflessly served on the board, Paul Tuller with Avila University, Ann Cole with Think Viral, Trent Dansel with Olson. Um, heading into 2021 in a new year, the South Kansas City Chamber will move our community forward. We'll provide critical support to existing businesses, and advocate for pro-business, pro-recovery policies at the federal, state, and local levels. While much of 2021 can't be predicted, you can rest assured that the Chamber will be there for your business. It is a great honor to introduce our Board Chair of 2021, Diana Boyd-McRoy. Diana works as the Dean of Student Development and Enrollment for Metropolitan Community College. Diana earned a Master's Degree and a PhD in Higher Education Administration from the University of Oklahoma, and a bachelor's degree from Kansas Wesleyan University. Diana is married with two college-aged children, and she has been active in church, Girl Scouts, and Boy Scouts as an adult leader. Diana loves her job at MCC and is grateful for the excellent staff, faculty, students that she gets to work with each day. Diana, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for agreeing to serve as Chair of the Board for 2021. Thanks, Vicki. I'm looking forward to the year ahead. We have a great group of board members and, of course, the work of you and Angela make it easy on the rest of us. Your dedication to the South Kansas City Chamber is unmatched, and I greatly appreciate your work. As you know, Metropolitan Community College is committed to the success of all areas of Kansas City, and I appreciate their support for me to volunteer in this role. We have a new year in front of us. Talk a little bit about your goals for the Chamber under your leadership. Certainly. In many ways, our goals are similar to what Erica described in January 2020 when she first became chair. We were all derailed with the shutdown in March 2020, and both the chamber and our member businesses were faced with the need to reconsider our plans and rethink how to operate. For that reason, we are looking again at the issues that were identified in late 2019 when we interviewed many organizations and business leaders to learn their perspectives on what the South Kansas City Chamber could do differently to support them. Among the responses we heard that members want us to do is to continue providing quality programs to help our members grow their businesses and consider different ways of doing their work and helping their customers. We'd like to increase participation on committees to ensure we are considering the perspectives of all the members from small businesses to large corporations and from a school district to a government agency. We've been fortunate to see a good amount of growth in South Kansas City and we want that momentum to continue as we recognize that a healthy business and education sector leads to more jobs and better opportunities for our community. We would also like to extend opportunities for external collaborations and regional partnerships. In addition, we plan to add mentoring and internship opportunities to better reach new businesses, students, and emerging professionals. We continue to appreciate our members and their willingness to invest in the Chamber. We want to ensure we are providing the programs and assistance you need so we will be reaching out more as we return to a more normal work routine in the next few months to learn what you need to be successful. 
To help us accomplish these goals, we are glad to have three great new members joining our South Kansas City Chamber Board this year. Brian Stone with Edward Jones, Sandy Kessinger with the Bank of Blue Valley, and Angela Vogan with Cerner. They join a group of committed professionals for investing their time for the betterment of South Kansas City. I'm really looking forward to the coming year and all the exciting things to come. And I want to thank both of you and the entire board for your time and talent to make our goals a reality. Erica, you had a tough challenge this year, but you helped us all stay focused on the needs of the chamber membership and ways we could pivot to meet changing needs. It is our great pleasure on behalf of the board and the executive committee to thank you for your dedication and the great job you've accomplished in your term as board chair. I wish you the best. I'm very glad we'll continue to have you on the board in the year ahead to help us as we move forward. Thanks very much. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I had a great time serving on the board and I appreciate everything that you guys did to help me um, move forward. Great, and thank you to both of you. Um, I'm excited about what 2021 is going to bring for the Chamber. Yes, absolutely. It is now time to recognize nine companies that have made an impact on our community over the past year. And to help us with this, I'd like to introduce our guest MC, news anchor John Holt from Fox 4 News. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Always fun working with you, Vicki, and with uh, the South Kansas City Chamber. We have a lot of fun events. Too bad we can't all be together, but we're not going to let anything stop us from honoring some terrific citizens. In fact, it's now time to recognize nine companies that have made an impact on the community in some way by presenting them with a Community Impact Award. Now, the main criteria for the Community Impact Award is a company or organization going above and beyond their normal scope of business to help the community or their employees. And our first honoree today, Suburban Lawn and Garden, started in 1950 by Bill Stewick as a lawn mowing business when he was in grade school. Since then, the company has grown into a multifaceted retail, wholesale, and service organization. They not only sell trees, shrubs, and bedding plants, the Stewart family is also very committed to supporting local charitable organizations and environmental stewardship in our area. One organization greatly benefiting from Suburban's passion for helping others, Cornerstones of Care, which has a physical presence in South Kansas City through its Ozenam campus. From giving in-kind donations, work experiences for their youth, and providing financial support, Suburban has supported cornerstones of care for the last 20 years. Most recently, Suburban Lawn and Garden has remained a primary sponsor for their annual disc golf tournament founded by Bill Stewick in 2008. The event held on the Stewick's private disc golf course, which is used by multiple charities for tournaments throughout the year. The Stewick family also has a passion for conservation, very evident through its support of the Kansas Land Trust, which works to preserve native wildlife habitats, and the Missouri Prairie Foundation, which protects native grasslands in Missouri. Other organizations supported by Suburban Lawn and Garden include the Nelson Art Gallery, the Overland Park Arboretum, and Powell Gardens. See a theme there? And during the summer, they often hold charity nights on Friday nights, allowing the designated charity to invite their customers and supporters to Suburban for an evening of shopping and food, after which 10% of gross profits are donated back to the charity. Vicki, let's welcome Suburban Lawn and Garden. Welcome and congratulations. We're so happy to have you here and we're so happy for all the support that you guys provide to our community. So. Yeah, well, before I begin my formal comments, I want to say that we're flattered to be mentioned uh, in the same company as the other reward recipients, uh, A.L. Huber, uh, Community Assistance Council, uh, First Call, Wonderscope, the Impact Center Schools. Um, and I got the nomination, obviously, with the award a couple weeks ago, and I've been trying to explain to our friends and employees uh, what exactly this award is and uh, how the nomination for the Big Impact Award uh, process went. And I told uh, them, as my friends, I said, you have two options. You can go on Facebook, you can look at all the award recipients and choose the organization they felt had the greatest impact in the community in Kansas City, or they could vote for us. Um, so in all seriousness, though, we are, on behalf of my parents um, and our over 400 suburban employees, uh, happy to gratefully and humbly accept this award, especially want to thank Cornerstones of Care, uh, Hope Faith Ministries, and all the other charities we've worked with uh, and we've had the honor to work with 
and whose dedication to the Kansas City community is really uh, what has had the most impact. Also, of course, want to thank the South Kansas City Chamber of Commerce and all the work they do to promote Martin City, where we are, and all their Martin City businesses and the neighborhood. As a locally owned multi-generational business, we are proud to be Kansas Cityans, South Kansas Cityans, and we look forward to many more years of being part of the Kansas City community. Thank Great. you. Thank you, and congratulations again. Our next honoree, A.L. Huber General Contractors, who cannot imagine living and working in this great city without giving back. Their team dedicated to participating in individual or community events that make Kansas City such a great place in which to live and work. Whether it's constructing a facility that will help a charity achieve their mission or serving individually with time and talents in a variety of ways, such as hauling mattresses to area kids who don't have beds, or renovating a basement into a teen center for a local transitional home that serves the homeless. They will not stop giving back to this great community that's given them so much in the past 111 years. Just a few of the volunteer and support efforts provided by the A.L. Huber team include providing Christmas gifts and a Christmas Day meal to children and mothers at Newhouse Shelter, serving meals to the residents of the Good Samaritan Society, providing clothing and gift donations to Healing House, as well as volunteering on work days, volunteering for sleepyhead beds, volunteering for inclusion connections, for community assistance council's annual Christmas store, and working with the Center Alternative School to provide services such as a coat drive, a student holiday party, and teacher appreciation activities. Vicki, let's welcome in A.L. Hubert General Contractors. Congratulations. Absolutely. Welcome and congratulations on your award. We're excited that you guys are in our community and everything that you do to support the community. Vicki, thanks so much. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, receive this award today. And uh, at A.L. Huber for over 100 years, uh, we've had the uh, privilege of serving the Kansas City area. And we are grateful to be able to carry on the tradition uh, that was started so many years ago of community involvement, uh, trying to make the communities in which we live and work uh, a better place. We're grateful for uh, the organizations with which we work and uh, the missions that uh, they fulfill and the services they provide to our communities every day. So again, thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations again. So John, who is our next award recipient? Vicki, glad you asked. We're honored to honor the Impact Center School Program with a goal of ending student homelessness in the Center School District. The program provides education, case management, and financial support to help families overcome their individual barriers to finding and successfully staying in affordable, dignified, and permanent housing. At any point in time, the program is working with between, get this, 30 and 40 families. During 2020, in spite of the pandemic, it limited face-to-face -face interaction for all of us, of course, the program successfully placed 12 families who were homeless at the beginning of the year into safe and permanent housing. The impact on the family, dramatic, providing stability for the student, which leads to improved health, mental health, social stability, and of course, academic achievement. Vicki, Impact Center Schools, what a program. Absolutely, great program. Congratulations. Thank you. We are so proud of having you guys in our community and everything that you do for Center School District. So uh, much deserved award. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We're honored to be able to accept this award today. We're honored by the, the recognition from the South Kansas City Chamber and the community and all of the, uh, the support that we've received from the community. So thank you for that. Thank you for your continued support as we help these families and these kids find affordable housing. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. And, you know, we've come a long way in a few short years, and this truly is a collective impact and so it's not just us standing up here that deserve this award but really 15 or 20 agencies that come together to deserve this award not to mention all the incredible hard work that's been put in by these homeless families so we're so so proud of them and we uh, appreciate them and, and this award is on behalf of them as well definitely I'd like to give uh, say thank you once again to our families and all our agencies out there and especially those in this past year able to inspire so many other families in our school district and the community so we just want to thank you to you guys and thank you for for blessing us with this award congratulations again thank you thank you 
So John, our next award winner is First Call. Tell us a little bit about them. Making a big impact in our community. During the pandemic, First Call's re-entry program served approximately 117 people impacted by the justice system. An impressive feat given the agency had to switch to virtual service delivery on March 13th, 2020, no longer allowed in correctional centers. In 2020, the team helped more than 25 clients find gainful employment and assisted four with applying for SSI, SSDI support. The reentry program also partnered with nine sober living facilities, five employment training partners, as well as Rediscover and Truman Medical Center for mental health needs. The partnerships and people served have continued to grow and expand in 2020, their motto being, it truly takes a community. The reentry team pivoted quickly, adding an additional recovery advocate to help bring services into these jails remotely. In 2020, not only did they find a way to maintain a remote presence with the Kansas City Municipal Drug Court, but the program expanded to include the Kansas City Reentry Center and Clay County Detention Center. And as if that were not impressive enough, providing services virtually through telephone and telehealth allowed the team to expand the program to assist individuals releasing from jails or prisons to four additional Kansas City metro counties. The team able to expand to these counties as the successful remote service delivery provided staff with the confidence to support clients in creative ways, such as engaging through phone calls and of course Zoom and relying on community partnerships. Vicki, first call, what a year. What a year, and we are so excited to present them with this award today. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank uh, the community and South Kansas City uh, Conference uh, for this award. Um, this team has worked very hard, and I'm proud of each and every one of you uh, that's here standing beside me and standing with me. Uh, this is truly a team effort. Uh, we did it all, and we got a couple of folks uh, that couldn't be with us today. That is Latanya. Uh, she is our reentry counselor. We got two reentry advocates that couldn't be here. That was Andrew and Rita. Uh, with me is uh, Chris, um, reentry advocate. We also have Emily, reentry advocate, and we have our awesome uh, reentry grants uh, coordinator with us. She's kind of like the boss. But uh, thank you for this award. First call, thank you. Way to go. Congratulations. Our next honoree, the Community Assistance Council. And last year was unprecedented for the council, the social service agency serving South Kansas City, the record-breaking number of calls, the volume of requests to the organization, at times overwhelming. South Kansas City was hit hard by pandemic-related job and income losses, but throughout the year, CAC provided food, hygiene items, diapers, even rent and utility assistance to thousands of people, many of whom were brand new to any kind of assistance needs. In 2020, 7,400 individuals and 1,583 families were served by the programs provided by CAC. More than 5,860 people received meals to avoid hunger. 276 families were able to maintain a basic quality of life with things like heat, AC, and water through emergency utility assistance. 178 families avoided homelessness through emergency rent assistance or temporary shelter. 4,940 individuals received hygiene items and another 283 received transportation assistance. Vicki, quite a year for the Community Assistance Council. Yes, it was a year, and we are very appreciative for everything you've done for members of our community. So congratulations on this award. Thank you very much, Vicki. We really appreciate the opportunity to serve Ca South Kansas City as the only emergency services agency located in South Kansas City. This year was not something we could have ever anticipated, but we came through nearly doubling our budget and our staff to be able to keep people in their homes, avoiding eviction, and to keep the lights and heat on and food on the table. I'd like to introduce our past president, John Sharp. Thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, we greatly appreciate all the work staff did because as you've heard, the amount of people needing help from the Community Assistance Council really just skyrocketed. But despite this uh, caseload, 
uh, Rachel and her staff were able to keep people in their homes, help keep them fed. So we greatly appreciate them and appreciate this recognition. And I'd, I'd like to turn it over to Rodney Bland, our new board president. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Vicki, and uh, thanks, South Kansas City Chamber. Well, as a current board president, I want to say on behalf of the board, we are honored to receive this recognition. And uh, thank you very much for acknowledging our accomplishments. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. John, we're going to change gears a little bit with our next award. It's baseball season. We'll throw him a curveball here. We're going to honor our next uh, impact award winner with the Economic Development Impact Award, which this year goes to Rainier Family Wonderscope Children's Museum. Wonderscope's decision to relocate and expand its inclusive, family-friendly children's museum to Redbridge Shopping Center has made an extraordinary impact on the entire Kansas City metro and South Kansas City in particular. Not only does Wonderscope provide a unique learning experience like none other for children, it contributes to the community through the number of visitors, new and old, that are drawn to South Kansas City. When they come to visit Wonderscope, potential customers are also being exposed to the unique retail and restaurant offerings in the area. Young families and individuals are exploring our neighborhoods and visitors from afar are remembering the convenience and amenities provided by South Kansas City's ideal location. Wonderscope is an invaluable recruitment tool for showcasing all that South Kansas City has to offer potential businesses and residents alike. And the announcement of the relocation to South Kansas City was a catalyst for many of the new businesses in Red Bridge Shopping Center today. Big help from the Wonderscope Children's Museum, Vicki. Great. Thank you, John. And congratulations. Welcome. We are so excited that Wonderscope is in South Kansas City and proud to have you here and everything that you guys do for the community. Uh, thank you, Vicki, um, and thank you to uh, the South Kansas City Chamber. We are honored to receive this award. We opened our museum in October of last year in the midst of a pandemic, um, and we're thrilled with the support that we got from our community. Uh, thank you to everyone who supported us and come out to the museum. We particularly want to thank um, all of our funders and foundations and corporations that have helped us build the new museum, in particular Bob Rainier and the Rainier Family Foundation, Owen Buckley and Lane Four. Um, and we hope to see everybody in South Kansas City at the new Wonderscope anytime. Great, congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. So John, our next set of awards that we're gonna give is gonna recognize some of our frontline heroes over the past year. Tell us about our Hero Award. Yeah, appropriately named in this pandemic time. Uh, the next award, the honorees will be receiving a special honor the Community Impact Hero Award, created by our selection committee to recognize the healthcare workers who've worked tirelessly for the past year to take care of COVID patients and keep our community safe and healthy. And our first honoree, St. Luke's Health Systems. Congratulations, and thank you for everything that our healthcare workers have done for our community over the past year. We really appreciate it. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for the honor to be here along with our colleagues in healthcare and others in South Kansas City who are making an impact every day. The past year, as you know, has been incredibly challenging and has touched all of us in some way. Before COVID ever arrived in Kansas City in preparation, we were all working hard on plans to protect and um, care for our community, knowing that the if would quickly become when. So when that did happen, this community partnered with us we all remember the treats and the signs and the cards and all the well wishes that poured into our hospitals and they were all greatly appreciated. But more importantly, our community stepped up to keep each other and our frontline workers safe by wearing masks, social distancing, and of course practicing good hand washing, all the things that we remember hearing over and over because they were so important over the last year. But it took everyone working together and we're still doing those important measures. Vaccines will play a key role in helping us turn the corner in this pandemic and it is a massive effort but thankfully we are fortunate to have the support of even more community partners who also care deeply about our community and not only willing but eager to help and i have to mention burns and mcdonald our neighbor in south kansas city who's opened the doors to us and helped us create a safe welcoming and accessible space for vaccination clinics and it's been operating like a well-oiled machine. And on top of that, from talking with their staff who had filled questions from patients about the events, you can tell they're as excited for our community to be vaccinated 
just as much as we are, and they've invested so much time in their efforts as we have as well. So that means a lot in this partnership. So our life's work is dedicated to serving and caring for our community, and it is an honor to do this in step with so many others who genuinely care about this community. So thank you to the South Kansas City Chamber and the many organizations making an impact every day for the opportunity to partner with you through this pandemic and always. St. Luke's Health System is very honored to accept this award. Well, congratulations and thank you very you're much welcome. for everything you guys have done. Well, you're quite welcome. Our next hero honoree, St. Joseph Medical Center. Vicki? Thank you and welcome today and congratulations. Um, we're so excited to present you guys with this award today and to thank all of our healthcare workers for everything that you've done over the last year. We know it's not been easy, um, but you guys have persevered and, and taken care of our community, so thank you. Thank you, Vicki. On behalf of St. Joseph Medical Center, I am happy to receive this award. With me today is a very small sampling of a much larger group of healthcare heroes who have spent countless hours at the hospital instead of at home when they're, with their families where we think they would really prefer to be during what has been one of the most scariest years in modern times. These heroes have given selflessly day after day after after day to make sure that we're taking the best care of our community and not only our COVID patients, but all the other patients who needed to receive health care during this very scary time. So we are so appreciative of the chamber, uh, recognizing the great work that has been done by St. Joseph Medical Center, our providers, our nurses, all of our ancillary staff, and even some of our volunteers who continue to come to the hospital. Thank you very much for this well-deserved recognition for our team. You're welcome and congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Vicki, last but not least, Hero Award honoree, Swope Health. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you. Thank you uh, John, Vicki, thank you for the award in the South Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. Just like to say over the last year, Swope Health has uh, tested over 15,000 people in the community for COVID-19. Uh, and continue to serve and fight against COVID-19 and serving the Kansas City community. Thank you so much. You're welcome and congratulations. Our healthcare providers have, have gone above and beyond over the past year and we just wanted to recognize them for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now for the news we've all been waiting for. It's time for our final award. I like news. I like good news. This is good. And this is good news, breaking news as we like to say. Time to announce the Big Impact Award winner. And over the past several days, we've given our members and the public, you, an opportunity to vote for one of the first six Impact Award winners that they felt made the biggest impact on our community. We've introduced them before. We're going to bring them back. Please join me in congratulating our Big Impact Award winner and the good news of the night, Impact Center Schools. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> Just uh, an extra honor on top of this. Thank you so much to the community and all of our supporters again for getting the vote out and for recognizing us for this this work that we're doing. We couldn't be more humbled than we are to be able to accept this award as well. So thank you. Congratulations. Amen. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we're like Chris said, we are just overjoyed and humbled by this and uh, thanks be to God. You know, he's the one that uh, unites us and kept us together all throughout the years. No, thank you. you know, we brought, brought home the championship and the MVP, so thank you. <laughs> All right. Great. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Wow, what a great time this has been for me. I like good news, so congratulations to all of our Impact honorees. Vicki, great time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for being here today. We truly appreciate you coming out to help us recognize these awesome businesses. Anytime. Fine. Thank you. I want to give one last thanks to all of the companies who sponsored today's event, but more importantly, I would like to say thank you to you, all of our members that have helped us grow the chamber over the last 90 years into the organization that it is today. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you. Thank you.